Hey, good morning, guys. It's uh, Saturday morning here at the Old Barn Homestead, and uh, I was uh, working late last night at the um, paint booth, uh, getting some stuff painted up, and it uh, was quite frustrating on a number of uh, different fronts. The uh, the main issue is that you know I go over there and paint at night, like during the week. Then the next morning, I mean, early, they, they get in there and move out the stuff that I just painted and they're touching it and, you know, things like that. And there's been a couple of times where there's been fingerprints in uh, in it that I couldn't get out just by wiping off and I had to, you know, wet sand and buff it out. And um, last night they changed the coupling uh, on the air hose so my fittings didn't work on my guns. So I had to go buy a fitting and then, uh, then um, put the fitting on and that was problematic um, and leaked water on what I was painting because it was leaking and I didn't have any uh, Teflon tape there. So I ran to the parts store and got Teflon tape and paid $4 for a little, that white cheap stuff you can get normally for a dollar at the parts store. And I mean, I finally got it all done, but it's just, it's frustrating and it's, it's a, you know, and when I mess something up or whatever, you know, I got to go all the way back over there. A lot of times, like between coats, you know, I, I mean, if I was here at the shop, I could be working on other stuff. Um, you know, when I'm there, like some things you have to wait like about an hour, hour and a half to be able to mask. You know, when you're doing a two-tone, three-tone, whatever, you paint one thing, mask it off, and paint something else. Well, you got to wait for that to flash off where well, you can mask on it. You can't just you know mask right on top of it it paints too wet so for an hour and a half I'm just sitting there you know waiting screwing around on my phone you know whatever so I was thinking that this would be a perfect spot to put a paint booth and I was thinking about a couple of different solutions um, the uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description to the local Craigslist to a couple of different container companies you know I can get one of those 40 foot by um, 40 foot long by 8 foot wide ones for 4900 brand new you know that are already painted a color that's very close to my to my shop now I can get a used one you know one that's in really rough shape that's been on the road and whatever uh, for about 1500 but then you got to do a lot of work to it so you know I really didn't want to do that the other thing I thought about was um, one of those you know uh, metal carports just pour a pad out here and um, I know it's windy out here hopefully I don't know if you if you guys can hear me or not hopefully that winds not causing too much of an issue but I'll go inside now anyway um, I don't know if um, get you guys set up here I don't know if the um, If you guys have those, there's all these little carport places around here that you can get these metal uh, carports. Um, and they use like two inch square tubing for framing. And you can get them in different sizes and you can get them where they're fully enclosed, you know. Um, <clears throat> for pretty inexpensive, I mean, they started about $800. But, you know, to get one that's fully enclosed and all the panels that go around it, you know, it'd be quite a bit more than that. And then I think the ones that they enclose like that, they don't really see it. They're not really sealed up very well. They have some gaps at, at the eaves in different areas. So that really wouldn't work too well for a paint booth. And I have to do quite a bit of extra work to seal it up and make it work right. So I think the container uh, is a really good way to go. It's only eight feet wide though. That's kind of the killer part. For most everything I do, that would work good. You know, not a problem. Um, but occasionally you get something in there that might be, you know, I mean, I've painted some four by eight sheets of stuff. So, um, you know, and it's, it's eight foot tall. I mean, yes, you could, you could hang it up in there and, and not have a problem or run it lengthways. But, you know, I don't know if you, anybody's ever painted in a small uh, paint booth or a contained area where you're kind of, you know, up against the wall, everything you do, it's just annoying and doesn't work well. But let me know what you guys think. Um, would you do the container routes? Or I, I think the, you know, by the time I had a slab poured 
and did the carport thing. It's going to be, you know, I, I'd be getting to five thousand dollars pretty quickly doing that, or I can buy a container that's that's brand new, uh, has a nice paint job on it, you know. And I, I mean, I just I don't want anything that's going to be an eyesore here. Um, it's already, you know, with my barn and everything else, it's already enough of an eyesore, but. It'd be worse to have a pretty ragged looking container ship out there. But check the link in the description. Let me know what you guys think about those. Um, and I'll, I'll shop around too and, you know, see if I can find some better, better options. But um, anyway, um, I will uh, turn the camera around and show you a couple updates on some things I painted uh, for Ray and David. And, uh, and we'll go from there. The, on the paint booth, the guy that I work with over there, He's a super nice guy, really a great guy. I don't mean to be, you know, um, criticizing him because he's got a business to run. You know, when he shows up there the next morning, they got, they, I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, coming into my shop in the morning and having, you know, crap all over my bench. And I got to move it all and get it all out of the way before I can work, you know. And uh, so I didn't mean to be critical of him. Um, they they got to do what they got to do. It just, it's just not... In, in the end, it's, it would be a lot more productive for me to have it here. And plus other finishing work that I do, you know, um, you know, uh, staining or, or, you know, stuff on wood. I mean, I, just to have a dedicated area to, to do that in would be, would be awesome. It'd be right on the other side of this wall. And uh, the, uh, you know, I could, I could pull electrical from there. You know, of course the air compressors right here run the line out down to the corner of this building and pull electrical out and uh, maybe a three inch conduit over to it uh, underground and get electrical and air over there and then uh, probably put a uh, cut a hole in it and put a, a window AC unit in there uh, just you know it, it would be miserably miserably hot in the summertime uh, of course it was it was hot last night I was sweating my ass off out there but that's that is what it is but again, uh, the main thing I, I wanted to just say that I wasn't, uh, you know, trying to be critical of uh, uh, Rudy, who's the owner. I, he's a great guy. I like him a lot. It's just, it'd be better if I could do it here. Yeah, this is the uh, prepping yesterday for the paint, uh, getting everything cleaned off. Um, I, I found that the, uh, a couple things. One is I was wiping all the oil off of these sheets before I would go uh, before I would do the cutting, you know, because it's just easier to clean in a flat sheet before you have, you know, it all cut up. Um, and also the, you know, shop towels or even just regular, um, you know, like a, a towel, like Shut Your Face Garage sent to me here. Um, it wants to grab on the edges and leave little fuzz and stuff. So that, you know, can cause a problem later in the paint you'll get you'll get that fuzz into the paint if you don't if you're not careful but the other the bad part about it is is if you leave the good thing about leaving the oil on it this water and stuff that comes up on the table if you don't prep it right away um you know it, it won't rust on you you know like i'll show you well i don't have any out here but you see that right there you know well that'll be all over it and if you leave it for enough time it's pretty corrosive it'll already start to to pit and because i'm using the surface of the bare metal in the flags and so forth you know it's it's important to have the metal looking really clean bright you know and look as good as you can look because whatever imperfections are in it are going to see you're going to see it in your final in your final paint but um so Anyway, what I do is uh, I leave it, you know, I may, I may cut it, but I don't go ahead and prep it. I just leave it like this, you know, with that oil and everything on it. And then I, you know, it takes about three wipings. You have to wipe it down three times to get it all off. Um, and then I do the prep and then immediately take it and go paint it. Because once you've taken all the oil off, you've really exposed it to um, just the elements, you know. And um, you might get lucky and things sometimes things will sit out like and you won't have any imperfections in it you know like this flag right here has been prepped and sitting for quite a while um you see from a distance it doesn't look bad but if you look up close to it 
Well, see, I'll have to re-prep that before I paint it. You know, that, that, that just won't, uh, that'll look like crap. So, um, another good reason to have the paint booth right here, you know, I could prep this stuff and take it right over and paint it. And while I'm waiting for, you know, one coat to flash off, I can be prepping the next piece, you know. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I, I made a mess out here yesterday and left. I did this in the afternoon and went over there at about well, five o'clock or so and was there until I think about 9 p.m. So I got to clean that up. But I was going to show David, I finally uh, brought this back from the, uh, from the paint booth and um, it's got some imperfections in it that when I painted it that, um, that I need to fix. So um, David, I'm, I'm assuming you still want this. Uh, I had found this version of it, this paint scheme online and um, you know, so it's got the candy gold and red together and then the black and white around and it really makes those letters pop. But the issues was I had a blow through right here on the candy and uh, bled through there. So that'll be pretty easy to fix. And then the other thing is on my masking, I mean, that's probably not the worst thing in the world, but I mean, if somebody's gonna pay $400 for something, it needs to look as good as it can look. But, um, so I'll have to do, uh, you know, I can fix that and blend that in and make that look fine. And then this, where that bled through the red there uh, will be easy to fix. So, I mean, it'll take, you know, it just needs to go back in the booth and a and, uh, little masking, little uh, scuffing and and I'll probably scuff the whole thing down and re-clear it because it stayed over at the paint booth for a long time and probably got a nice coat of overspray on it. So, um, mask it off, blend in those areas. Um, of course, well, I'll scuff the whole thing first and then mask it off, blend those areas, and then pull the masking off and give it a, um, you know, some more clear coat, a nice uh, fresh clear. But I think it's uh, pretty, pretty sweet looking. And it's huge. It, I don't know if the it's the camera is really doing it justice, but um, it's 40, 40 inches in diameter, I believe. Maybe forty two. I can't remember. But um, I, pay, I I cut this thing for a guy, and he changed his mind and wanted a different design, and I charged him extra for it. But I went ahead and painted this one because I already had it cut after he. Um, so I've had it for quite a while. Um, so it's good to good to get that in the hands of David. It's a pretty, really, I, I think it's a pretty sweet piece. Um, and this is, I think, the first time I've actually ever shown it all together with the backer behind it, because I have I knew immediately it was gonna be a problem on that. Um, so, anyway, I was gonna show uh, Rooster an update here on the uh, Harley signs. And I've got a full build video on these, and um, the lighting in here is not that great, so it's it's this is not gonna um, not gonna do it justice. But it um, the uh, patterns in the orange candy, and I added some pearl to the uh, to the candy, uh, just turned out awesome. And then um, yeah, so yeah, again, this the lighting in here is not uh, not not great, but. Um, you can see my reflection in there. What do you think about those uh, shoes right there? Will those work? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, let me know what you think on the containers. Um, and um, for Ray, it's going to be a few days. Uh, let this stuff flash off. I'll just keep it in here to uh, keep the dust and crap off of it, at least for one day. Uh, because it's really open. You know, the clear is just so susceptible to fingerprints and whatever like within the first 24 hours and then another couple of days after that um you know you still got to be pretty careful with it so when you get ready to put this on top of that if you move it at all i mean it you know you can leave scratches in it and fingerprint you know it's just you just gotta be patient with it but um all right guys see you